A change.org petition is circulating now online calling for the resignation of Kansas City Chiefs starting kicker. Harrison Butker has been sparking controversy online and really all over water coolers since a commencement speech he gave at Benedictine College. I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Now imagine you going to graduation, it's the greatest time of your life and you've done all that hard work for four years, right? And you're sitting there and you can't wait to, to end the ceremony so you can go on about your day. And <laughs> the punter from the Super Bowl winning, Kansas City Chiefs, comes up there and says, hey, guys, I know you guys think you're going to get all these uh, uh, promotions and you're going to go and work hard, but you're not. You're going to end up in the kitchen like my father. More and more, I see why women choose the goddamn bear. You got to be f shitting me to, to uh, take your time out of the day. Just make a great speech and say, hey, guys, I'm so proud of you guys. Go out, make your mark on the world as you see fit and call it a day no you have to be misogynistic on the goddamn stage that is crazy like out of your way hey guys welcome back to that liminal period it's your girl chun ling shoddy i'm sure many of you guys have already heard or seen bits and pieces of the commencement speech from harrison butker that went viral over the past few days i wanted to see why everyone is so outraged and saying that he is misogynistic and calling for his cancellation and resignation from the kansas city chiefs for the ladies present today congratulations on an amazing accomplishment you should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, so I just want to remind everyone that this is not the entire speech. This is just a portion from the speech that really enraged people online. This is the part that people are calling misogynistic and quite frankly, I don't see it. I see nothing wrong with what Harrison had to say because first of all, free speech. But secondly, he is a Christian man that has been invited to deliver a commencement speech at a private Catholic university. A commencement speech is a speech that is delivered at the end of graduation ceremonies and it often touch on a theme or common core beliefs that is shared by that group of people. And with this taking place at a private Catholic university, I would think that speaking on traditional gender roles and the joy and fulfillment of it is very fitting within that theme and common core belief. I, I don't understand like where the outrage is coming from. People are getting pissed about what he has to say and i'm curious as far as what is the perception of the women that is actually graduating from benedictine college that heard his speech is having a traditional gender role something that they also believe in because it should be if they're at a catholic university it should be something that they understand and when he's speaking about vocation a lot of people are thinking that oh my gosh like that is your career that is the only thing you can do that is your place he's trying to set women back put us back into the kitchen however they're misunderstanding the word vocation vocation is your life's work that is your life's purpose that is your mission what were you placed here to be and what are you going to excel at when you lean into you can be a teacher and a mom. However, what do you have the most pride and joy in? What is the most fulfilling role for you? And of course, these women and a lot of the women that are responding online don't get it because they probably have not accomplished it yet. 
they haven't gotten there yet. So Harrison is just simply reminding them that there is more to come. Women have been fed the idea that we need to be independent, that we need careers, that we need to be proud of our accomplishments and our accolades and our PhDs. I'm a PhD. And when he is speaking on his wife, you can hear him tearing up. But anyways, I want to hear some of the feedback or some of the outrage on TikTok. So let's check them out. I wish I could be like the rest of the world and say I cannot comprehend or understand Harrison Butker's commencement speech but I do understand it and I got a very similar one to my own commencement speech. Um, what people don't realize and a huge reason of why I started my channel in the first place is because I grew up in Christian fundamentalism and I see it creeping into the regular evangelical Christian church with Trump, with politics, with policies. And so I know people are not hiding anymore their beliefs, they're saying the quiet part out loud. And so people who have not known that they've been working on this for years and years and years are surprised. I am not surprised in the slightest. Most churches that you go to, if they are non-denominational, if they say Baptist, if they are Presbyterian, for certain ones like OPC, some Presbyterians are more liberal, but if they're any of those basic generic denominations, they believe in complementarianism. And that means that they believe that women are to submit to men and that the woman's to be keepers at home and that their main job is to make sure that the home is set and that they are helping and being help meets to their husbands. It is not surprising at all. I am a little shocked that he talked about it so openly since he's like on the Chiefs and Famous, but then I'm not shocked at all because Christian nationalists have been gaining ground and they have already said what they think and they are no longer trying to hide it, which is terrifying. And there has been no backlash on him as far as I've seen very much yet. And so he's going to get away with it because this is what they think. And it is not surprising. So the thing is the idea of complementarianism or however she said it, where a man and a woman should be complementary of each other. I think that's a concept that a lot of people can get on board about, not just Christian individuals. I think that in order to have a successful and fruitful and productive relationship and marriage you're going to need to have people that support each other as well as complement each other not just people who are trying to overshadow each other and constantly have a fight for power okay i do think that for every dynamic you need to have balance and again the lie that he is referring to is feminism Feminism has taught women that we should be independent, that we should go for our careers, and that is where we should place our priorities. He never said, don't do that. He said, be proud of what you've accomplished. Be proud of how far you've gotten. He's just simply reminding them that there's more to come. And unfortunately, I've done several videos on it, but people are not getting married marriage rates are declining, birth rates are declining. This is an issue to everyone. Harrison, like many people, recognize that the world around us is deteriorating on many facets. And it is all due to weak ass people, dumb ass people, and weak minded people. This was his opportunity to address one of the most vulnerable group of people dealing with all of the deterioration. And that is going to be young women. Because again, we're feeding into those lies when we go out and try to climb that corporate ladder. I remember when I was 25 and my number one focus was to be the best account manager within the consulting company that I was working at. I was in love with my job and not in love with the work that I was doing, but I was in love with the accomplishment. I was in love with the title. I was in love with the money. I was in love with the access that that money and that title provided me. I was slaving away at this job to make someone else dream happier when I was not cultivating and building a family, a home, a life outside of work. Those were some of my depressed years. And I can look back on it and I don't miss it. I don't at all. I never wake up and say, damn, I wish I can go back and manage $40 million portfolio again. I never say that. I have never done that. But I do wake up and miss my family. I wake up and I miss my mom. I miss my nieces. I miss my aunt. That is where I place a lot of my value in. And that is going to be very similar to for a lot of men. Throughout life, of course, we're going to change what we are going to focus on. However, when you talk to old people, just old people in general, they are most proud of the family that they've built. This is Harrison Butker's mom, Elizabeth Butker. 
And I want you to just look at her credentials. She is a medical physicist on staff at Emory University. If you don't know who Harrison Butker is, consider yourself lucky, but he is the kicker for the Chiefs and he gave a horrific graduation speech yesterday at Benedictine College. In it, he talks about how a woman's true vocation is, is domestic work. And I just wonder if his mom agrees. Vocation she is a, a trigger word for Smith them. She has a from College, a master's in medical physics at the Georgia Institute of Technology, and she's been in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Emory University for 36 years. And it makes me wonder if he realized what a direct insult that was to his own parent. And it is evident that he has no respect for the work that she did and continues to do. And I am not here saying that domestic work is not work. I truly believe that it is a ton of work and it is unpaid work. And it also doesn't matter that that would be the partnership that he would choose even though his mom worked outside of the home. But to have a mother that is as accomplished as she is and then to stand up in front of a graduating class of which she was one of those people in her time and say, that women have been deviously misled into believing that having a career or getting promoted at work is more important than your true vocation of being in the home. So once again, we see another woman that has also drank the Kool-Aid that's been served to her by feminism because Harrison never said anything about women not going to work. He never said about women not being proud of, the, of their accomplishments. He just said that his wife found herself the most happy, herself the most fulfilled whenever she stepped into her role as a mother and wife, okay? That was his observation. I think, again, that is a very fair observation because a lot of moms will probably tell you that they are proud of being moms. Even if you ask medical physicists or whatnot Harrison mom is, like, when you ask her to introduce herself, she's probably going to say, oh, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm this, I'm this, and then talk about her accomplishments. She doesn't lead with her job title. Her job title of a physicist ends when she clocks out. It blows my mind that Mother's Day was just this past weekend and she and other women have already forgotten the value that we place on moms in society. She's already forgotten it. When was the last day that you had career day outside of preschool when adults came in and showed you different professions? When was the last time we ever had a day to celebrate just doctors and nurses or whatever? No, but you have Mother's Day. That's a national holiday. Okay. Of course, I'm not talking about nurse week or, you know, like taco Tuesday. Like, of course, like we dedicate days and months and weeks to everything that's funky, like LGBT. Okay. No, I'm talking about actual national holidays that have been recognized and not just within America. Mother's Day exists around the world. So how does the rest of the world understand the value within a woman, the true life's purpose, the vocation of a woman is to serve her family, to prioritize her husband and her children. Why is that such a bad thing? This is wild to me. Watching that video, let's bring back booing. Hmm? That was very quiet for me. Isn't like half that student population women? The way that he says homemakers, it was almost like a- I just wanted to hit pause because I wanted to add another list of words that will trigger feminists. It's going to be homemaker, vocation, submit, help me, cooperative, supportive. The list goes on, okay? These words, if you just simply add it to your conversation, if you just add it to your vocabulary, you're going to piss off a whole bunch of women. And actually, that might be a good thing if you're trying to weed out women when you're in the dating market. Just occasionally drop those words in. Just just drop little truth bombs in. Cheeky, like bad word. Like he was like being cheeky. Hey, call your mom. I understand why you love that your wife is such a homemaker because of your abandonment issues. You always know where she is and she's always available, av available to go to your football games. And that is somehow healing. Stop making every woman your mommy. Call your mommy. Give it to God. Talk to God about it. I have genuine no words. I cannot believe that he like really thought he did something. As a woman who's getting married next month, I am very excited. Congrats. Is my wife. Is my life about to begin next June, Harrison? Is that when it starts? It didn't start when um, I got an Emmy for being on the NFL Network, right? 
it didn't start when I got to cover the WNBA draft, did it? It didn't start when I covered two different Olympics while I was still in college, right? No, 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 it'll start next month when I get married to, this, to the man I've been with for the last 10 years. Thank you so much for letting me know because I was unaware. So thanks, Harrison. Thanks. And I will not be drafting you in my fantasy league this year as I have for the last three years, okay? Sorry. Not that it really affects you, but for my own personal reasons, I will not be drafting you anymore. For this last woman, I really do hope that with you preparing to be married within the near future, I really do hope that within five years, 10 years, maybe take a step back, pause and reflect back on this very moment. And maybe then you'll understand what Harrison was trying to say. When people say life began, it doesn't mean like, oh yeah, like everything else up to that point didn't matter. It's just that everything up to that point led you to this pivotal moment in your life where the trajectory changed. For some people that is graduating college and moving across the country, that was the moment that things changed for them because they put themselves out there. For some people, it was a death of a parent. It changed them. They saw life differently. They saw time. They saw relationship. They saw friendships and family differently. A lot of people, when they speak back on their life, they can pinpoint a time frame where there were just several different things that occurred, several different actions that were taken, several different oppositions from the world that happened that pushed people to that next level. They are trying to find reasons to get pissed off with and not be happy. Like literally the man was crying when he talked about the importance and value of his wife and the mother of his children. Like when is anyone going to cry and be so appreciative of the fact that you were their flight attendant. As a flight attendant, you're probably going to come across and serve millions of people throughout your lifetime. When are they ever going to look back and think back and see how you changed their life? They're not. They're not. They're simply not. And it's not because your job isn't important. I'm talking as if I am a mother of five and married but I look forward to the day that I am married. I look forward to the children that I have. I look forward to grandkids. I look forward to building and curating a family and social network around me that is supportive and loving and intelligent. But anywho, I wanted to end this video on a clip that I found from Soul Pancake. And there was a question asked to 100 people. The question was, what are you most proud of? And the individuals that were asked this question were ages from 5 to 100. And so I think it's going to be very interesting to get their one answer on what they're proud of. I enjoyed this conversation. Please do let me know what you guys are proud of. And if that has anything to do with the college or education that you guys attained. Let me know what you think about Harrison's commencement speech and if I'm completely wrong and have internalized misogyny. But I enjoyed this conversation. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Bye. What are you most proud of? Nowadays, people normally use pride to mean something they feel really good about. And for that, it would be my daughter. My mom. My brother, because he's really strong. My family. My mom and dad are proud of me. They hug me. I'm most proud of the way my mother raised me. Like work and that and the CD in school. I'm good at friends and I'm really happy because I'm learning. Having lots and lots of talents. I felt really good when, when I was in first grade. I did, I did a lot of poems. I have to memorize them. It was really hard. And I, I, I almost got everyone right. I would say becoming the longest freshman long jumper at my high school. My art. I. I like to act and like draw and play drums. Just being me, just living my life and not getting in as much trouble as I thought I was. My humor. Taking risks. Not everybody does that. Don't be afraid to chase my dreams, you know. Just uh, take a life and face them head on. I had the courage to walk into LA City College with only a seventh grade education. I am so proud of my diploma. After seven unsuccessful attempts, I was able to kick the nicotine addiction. Uh, falling in love was a good one. I'm most proud of what I'm really doing as a person and trying to help people. I don't have a big family and I don't live anywhere near my family. So it means so much to have a group of friends that I can lean on uh, in any kind of time, in any kind of place I'm at. Most proud of in life is probably uh, how cool my kid is. I made a pretty good kid. 